can you teach an old Jeep new tricks? We're about to find out with all new Rough Country parts. Keep watching this episode of The Build Up. Hey guys, we're back with another episode of The Build Up and this time it's personal because it's my personal Jeep TJ. Now this is a 2000 year model Jeep TJ. I've had it for about 12 years. Uh, originally it was my father's and he's no longer with us so needless to say I'm never getting rid of it. A little over eight years ago we put the six inch short arm kit on this Jeep. Uh, since then I daily did for about four or five years. Uh, I've taught my kids how to drive on it, showed them how to work on vehicles with it. We go on trail rides with it. In those past eight years as a company we've grown leaps and bounds and our products have gotten better and better. I want to take advantage of that. I'm going to upgrade certain items on the Jeep, not change up the overall look too much, just bring it up to date with our latest technology in shocks, lighting, winch, and etc. I've been really looking forward to doing this build up for some time. You may have noticed the Jeep sitting in the wings just waiting for its turn. Well, it's turns now. Let's take a look at what we've got. First off, we've got a brand new soft top because the one that's on it has seen much better days. We've got a set of seat covers as well as floor mats. We're gonna replace the shocks that are currently on there with our V-Tube series mono tube as well as the steering stabilizer. We've got brand new control arms. We've updated our flex joint design and I'm really looking forward to getting those on the TJ. 22 years on the factory ball joints, it's time for a new set. I'm a steel wheel guy on a Jeep. I love big, beautiful wheels. I've got some 22s on my excursion. I don't need those on the trail. Um, the first time I scuff something like that up is gonna make me sick. I could just paint the ones that are on there, but they're showing some signs of rust, especially around the face and the hoop. That becomes a safety issue. We're gonna go ahead and replace those with a new set of Rough Country steel wheels. We've also got our center caps as well as our lug nuts. We're gonna update that no-name winch that's been on there since before I owned it with a nice Rough Country 9000 series with a synthetic rope. And finally, lighting. Now the lighting that's on my Jeep now is actually the prototype lighting from when we first got into doing LEDs. These are our Slimline Black Series DRLs. They're gonna bring the look up to date. We're gonna take care of that embarrassing spaghetti nest of wires under the hood with an MLC6 light controller. Let's get the Jeep on on the lift and get to throwing these parts at it. All right, we've got the Jeep positioned at the lift, ready to go. We're gonna work on this thing bottom to the top. First, I'm gonna take the spare off, then we'll get it lifted up and remove the wheels and tires. With the wheels and tires out of the way, we can see what we're looking for here, and it's gonna be our upper and lower ball joint. And we're upgrading them with a heavy duty ball joint that Rough Country offers. Now's also a great time to go ahead and check your brake pads for wear and check your Jeep for any new leaks. Notice I didn't say any leaks, any new leaks. N2.0s had just come out when we installed them on my Jeep. We had switched from the, uh, the white hydros I've never had a problem out of them in eight years and I'm looking forward to at least another eight years with the V2 and their monotube smooth ride. Right. Now we'll pull the axle out. We've got the hub removed. We went ahead and pulled the axle out. I've got the cotter pins removed from the upper and lower ball joint. We'll go ahead and break those loose, get the knuckle out of the way, and press the ball joints out. Woo! Doing all these build up on new vehicles has spoiled you, boy. I am getting dirty and having to use a breaker bar. That's why you want to replace your ball joints. The top one's good, but man, look at that. Okay, before I clean and paint this, we're gonna press the ball joints out. There is a sequence. You're gonna press the upper out, then press the lower out. Then you're gonna press the lower in and press the upper in. You have to go that way or you'll be pressing them out and putting them back in sequence. Ask me how I know. You may have to try a couple of different adapters to get it where, where you want it to be. All right, we'll go ahead and take the upper out all right, let's get this lower out. Here's where I show you why you have to remove the upper first. If you don't want to invest in a ball joint press, most 
parts stores are going to have one in their loan and tool program. So you won't be out anything, or you may have to rent it, but it'll be a minimum cost. There we go. As simple as that. Before we install the lower ball joint, we need to clearance the bottom of the axle housing so we have access to the zert fitting in the lower ball joint. So I'm going to mark where I need to take the material off. Alright, we've got the lower ball joint installed, we clearanced for the grease fitting, now we're going to go ahead and pop in the upper ball joint and reassemble the axle. The upper ball joint is installed and seated properly, let's reassemble the axle. We've got the axle, knuckle, hub, rotor, and caliper all reinstalled, and that completes the HD ball joint install for the TJ. It's going to be the same on the YJ as well as the XJ. Next up, we're going to move to control arms. We're going to replace the upper and lower. We're also going to replace our shock with our V2. These springs don't need replacing. Eight years riding on them daily and trail ridden. They still perform great. They ride great. They haven't sagged at all. While I've got it apart, I may pull them out and hit them with a little paint. They've got eight years of trail rash on them. I don't want them to rust up, but it's not even necessary to do that. Let's go ahead and take care of the control arms. Uh, we will assemble them on the workbench and then move over and take the old ones out, do a comparison and install the new ones. All right, let's get these open. And here are our lowers with our Clevite bushings already pressed in. Let me clear this out of the way, we'll get these assembled. I have watched the evolution of our control arms over the past eight plus years, and I am really excited to put these forged flex joint units on. Come with the Clevite bushing on the lower. Uh, the upper, of course, is open because the bushing is in the axle itself. We will get these assembled. Gonna use a little bit of anti-seize, not too much. Don't wanna look like the Tin Man from The Wizard of Oz. We'll get those all together, and then we'll go ahead and get them installed on the Jeep. All right, I've got the arms assembled initially. Uh, what I mean by that is I'm gonna pull the arms we're replacing out, measure those, and then make these match, and then reinstall them. So let's get to it. All right, we've got the passenger side lower off, and not surprisingly, it's still in great shape. The flex joint's still nice and tight on it. They served me well for as long as they did, and I know that the forged versions are gonna do me one better. Let's take a center to center measurement. We are at 16 and an eighth. So we'll set the new one at 16 and an eighth, reinstall it. Now that doesn't eliminate the need for an alignment, but it's gonna get us pretty close before we take it to the shop. I'm really looking forward to seeing just how well these forged units last under my abuse. If these did that great over almost 10 years, then these are not gonna have a problem at all. Boom. We're gonna snug these up. We're not gonna tighten them until it's sitting on its own weight. Well, these adjustable control arms are gonna allow us to dial in our caster and our pinion angle. And the flex joints are gonna allow us increased articulation off-road. The old ones did the same thing, but these new ones are gonna give us renewed performance and a look that is just We'll leave those loose till we get it set on the ground. 
We've replaced the upper and lower control arms on the front, made sure to measure them and get them the exact same measurement as the ones that were on there to help with the alignment. Uh, we've left the bolts loose uh, as well as the lock nuts loose until we get it sitting on its own weight. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and replace the N2.0 shocks with the new V2 mono tube. Oh yeah, I'd say she's still good. But it is a twin tube, and I'm looking forward to the performance of the V2 mono tube. We have got the N2.0 removed. It has served its time. Now it's time for the upgrade. I've chosen the V2 for a couple of reasons. The aluminum body is gonna dissipate heat. The mono tube design is gonna prevent any kind of cavitation or foaming of the oil. It's gonna give me a great ride on road because I do take the Jeep on road a lot. But more importantly, it's going to give me superior performance off-road when I need it the most. We'll drop the shock into place and secure the lower with factory hardware. We're going to go ahead and cut the paracord, let the shock come up, and guide it into place. Now we're going to take our upper bushing hardware, drop it into place, center it on the hole, and add our nut. So get that tightened down, make sure our shock's in the right location, and then we'll tighten the lower nuts. Now that we've got the V2 monotube shocks installed in the front, we're going to finish it off with the V2 steering stabilizer. All right, we've got the control arms installed in the front. We've got the shocks and the steering stabilizer installed in the front. Now it's time to move to the rear of the Jeep, install those control arms and shocks. Then we will mount the tires, drop it on the ground, continue with the rebuild. Just like the front, I'm gonna remove the control arms one at a time. I'll take a measurement, I'll set the new control arm at that measurement, and I'll install the new control arm. And then we'll be ready to install the wheels and tires and get it sitting back on the ground. We've got our rear, upper, and lower control arms here. We're gonna go ahead and assemble them, and then as we pull the old ones off, we'll take a measurement, set the new ones to that measurement, and install them. Let's get going. These rear control arms are gonna go together just like the fronts. I'll go ahead and get those assembled with some anti-seize. We'll get them laid out, and we'll start pulling the old ones off. We've got all the arms assembled. Let me grab the first upper. We'll bring it over here, measure it, set the new one to match, and install it. And now, cosmetically, the rears are gonna look worse. They take the brunt of any kind of ledge you go off of. Uh, they're always under a load, unlike the fronts that are only under a load in four-wheel drive. Overall, these are still in great shape. Both bushings are still intact. Let's uh, get a measurement and set the new one to match. Lower control arm. Overall looks in great shape. Obviously, it's caught a lot of ledges and rocks over the years, but I mean, the integrity is still there. Just some powder coat chipping. The bushings are both still in really great shape. Let's get this forged one measured up and get it installed. We'll torque those down once it's back on its own weight.
All right, we've got our rear spring recoded uh, for another eight to 10 years of service, I am sure. We'll go ahead and get it popped in place. We'll remove the N2.0 series shock and get ready to install the V2 mono tube. get this N2O out. I've already got these loosened at the bar pin so I can just get it. All right. There's our N2O and here's what we're replacing it with. The V2 mono tube. Our repainted spring and our V2 mono tube shock all installed on the driver's side. Now I'm going to repeat the process on the passenger side and we'll be ready to install our wheels and tires. We've got the control arms mounted on both sides as well as the shocks. I went ahead and cinched down the jam nuts. I've left the control arm bolts loose. Once we put the wheels and tires on and we get it sitting on its own weight, we'll go ahead and tighten up the control arm bolts front and rear and add our track bar bolt. Once we do that, we'll be ready to move on to electronics and I think we'll start with the winch first. Our wheels and tires, we got them back. We've got the Mickey Thompson Baja MTZs mounted on the Rough Country steel wheels. Now, the Mickeys were only a couple of months old. It's hard to go wrong. It's a classic tire, great tread, great grip. I love them, that's why I use them. Uh, honestly, I didn't think it'd be that much of a difference from going from one steel wheel to another, but I gotta say, these Rough Country steel wheels really set the tire off. Uh, it kinda looks like a completely new setup, which I'm really excited about. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get the Jeep down to a working level. We'll put on the spare and put on all four tires and we'll get it sitting on its own weight, tighten up those bolts we discussed and move on to electronics. The Jeep back on the ground and the control arms torqued and the track bar bolt back in place. That completes the refurb of the suspension for the Jeep. Now we're ready to move on to recovery. We're going to replace this steel cable no-name winch with a Rough Country 9500 synthetic. So let's get going. We're going to remove this winch and prepare to install the 9500S. The 9500 is going to be more efficient and more powerful than this one. The synthetic cable is going to be safer and lighter and it just looks better. Whew, that steel cable's heavy. I'll probably pick up a couple of miles per gallon using that synthetic. Don't worry about that. This bumper is actually an older Rough Country bumper that we no longer make. We're gonna refurb it with a little paint and it's gonna be good to go. And this 9500 series winch is a hoss and it is exactly what my Jeep needs. We've got the winch plate here. We've got our light mount and we've got our Hoss Fair lead. We're gonna go ahead and install that. Then we'll install the winch onto the plate and put the plate back with the bumper. All right, let's get the winch and winch plate set in place and then we will run our wiring to the battery. The 9500 S series is gonna be lighter. It's gonna perform better. And best of all, it bolts right on. All right, we've got our negative and our positive leads from the winch. I'm gonna go ahead and route those under the hood to the battery. I'm not gonna connect them yet. We're gonna wait until we install the MLC6. That way we won't be unhooking and rehooking and we can get all the wiring squared away at once. We're gonna go up through here and I'm probably just gonna stop here because a lot of this wiring is gonna be taken out with the new lights and the MLC6 cleaning stuff up. All right, and I will tie these down, make sure they're not going to chafe. And like I said, we'll route them to the battery when we install the MLC6. I've got another plan for the end of this rope before the build's done. Uh, and then we are going to go on and move on to removing the existing lights before we install the MLC6 because there's going to be a lot of wiring to remove. A lot. The MLC6 is really going to clean it up. 
All right, now that we've got the lighting's main harnesses removed from under the hood, we'll go ahead and close it down. And we're gonna remove the actual lights, get those out of the way, go ahead and install our new lights so we can route our wiring nice and sanitary to the point where the MLC6 is gonna be installed. Now this pod had a date with a tree limb. It actually pulled it off the mount and put it through the windshield. I was able to put a larger washer on, remount it, and it still worked perfectly fine. So I won't be putting these in the trash. They'll go on a lawnmower or something. I know this is a prototype light because uh, this is, uh, if you look on the website, the shots for the hood brackets, they're my Jeep. So what we're replacing everything with is our Black Series Cool White DRL light. These are a single row light. Each light's gonna come with a cover and pop it off and mm, look at that. That is gonna look great. Can't wait to get it installed. All right, we've got our 50 inch slimline mounted. We've got our wiring ran down the A pillar and into the cowl. I'm gonna do the same for the pods and the hood light. Get all the wiring into the cowl. Then once we mount the MLC6, we'll pop through the firewall under it more than likely bring the wires in nice and sanitary. Oh, that sits exactly where I wanted it to sit. We're gonna go ahead and install the control unit first. That way we know where we're gonna route our wires to and just how long they need to be. Once we do that, we'll go ahead and go inside and mount the gauge pod and get it all set up. So on this application, the unit actually mounts to the firewall right about here. I'm gonna go into the cowl. I'm gonna pop a hole in the firewall, put a grommet in that. That way I've got the cleanest insulation coming straight to the MLC6. So we've got our unit mounted to the firewall. We'll take our harness for our pods, get it connected, go through a grommet in the firewall to the position it's supposed to be in, and we'll get ready to connect the pod. Uh, this switch pod is fully assembled, has six rocker style switches. All we have to do is plug in one plug from that harness and we'll be ready to go. We're gonna take the screws out of the side and that is gonna take the upper portion from the mounting bracket. This is gonna sit in the dash. We're gonna mark our two holes, use the screws provided to mount this firmly in that change tray on top of the dash. Once we do that, we'll set the pod on top of it, connect it, we'll do a little bit of clearancing on the defrost panel and we'll be done. got the defrost panel back on everything's buttoned up now it's time to start the vehicle go ahead and get the low voltage sensor activated and we can turn the lights on and test the system out you can see all the switches are lit up but I can press the switch turn them off turn them back on let's run through it let's check the DRLs great and now let's run through the rest of them Woo, plenty of light, brother. All right, that completes the install of the MLC6 as well as the winch. Almost, I've got one more thing for the winch. All right, we're gonna replace the hook that the winch normally comes with, with the Rough Country winch thimble. This is gonna really finish off this front end nice. We're not gonna have a hook dangling. And when we need to recover, we'll take a D-ring shackle, put it into the thimble and winch from there. First step is going to be to remove the hook. We'll pull the pin out, drop the winch line in place, put the pin back, 
and replace the snap ring without shooting it across the shop. Now we'll just retract the winch and get it in place. All right, we are getting really close to finalizing this rebuild. Next up, we're gonna move to the soft top replacement. Uh, we're gonna get the old top off. We're gonna replace the webbing that connects the back bow with the center bow. I was able to pick this up off Amazon. That's not gonna take a minute. Uh, we'll get this top off. We'll get the new top laid out in the sun so it gets nice and soft and it's easy to install. First step, removing the old top. Uh, yeah, I'd say, I'd say we were due for a new top overall. We're gonna work back to the front. So I'm gonna get it folded out. We'll go remove it from the back bow, remove it from the center bow, and we'll take the top Flip it onto the hood and remove it from the front boat. The rest of our screws on our front bow are underneath the top. So we need to flip the top over, pull it over the bow, and get to our screws. As crispy as this top is, I might end up having to cut it off. I know the perfect place for this. All right. All right, with our webbing replaced, we are now ready to install the new soft top. I've got it sitting out in the sun, stretching out. It should be about ready now, so let's go ahead and go get it. Yeah, it's good and soft. You know, it's amazing how good a Jeep looks with a new top, and rightfully so. I'd say the top's about 50% of the body. Uh, and by that same notion, a ratty top can make your Jeep look really bad. And with the price Rough Country has our soft top set, there's absolutely no reason for your Jeep to look bad. And that completes the installation of the soft top with half door uppers on this Jeep TJ. We're quickly approaching the end of this rebuild buildup on my Jeep TJ. Our final touches are going to happen on the inside. We're going to take care of some seat covers and toss in a couple of floor mats. But before we do that, something's really been bothering me. The whole time I was under the hood installing the MLC6, I was working around and trying to avoid that piece together cold air intake with this dirty filter, really not even trying to look at it. It's been on there since before I got the Jeep and I think it's time for it to go. So before we go inside, we're going to pop the hood open and install a brand new Rough Country cold air intake with pre-filter. Here's what the kit consists of. We've got a pre-filter that goes over our actual filter. We've got weather stripping to seal our heat shield to the top of the hood. We've got our intake pipe as well as a coupler that connects it to our throttle body. We've got our hardware, we've got clamps, and we've got our hose for our crankcase ventilation. Let's uninstall the one that's in there, get it in the trash. It's heavy. All right, we've got our heat shield installed. Next up is gonna be our coupler. We're gonna install this to the throttle body. Then we will install our intake tube, route it around the heat shield, secure it, install our filter and our pre-filter. And last but not least, we'll attach our crankcase ventilation tube to the intake tube. Cold air intake installed. Now I can breathe easy, knowing my Jeep can breathe easy. Let's get to those seat covers. 
All right, I've got the top down so you can see what I'm doing in the interior. I'll pull the doors off for the same reason. Uh, these seats are in pretty good shape. The driver's side's got a little bit of wear, uh, but overall, they're, the foam's decent. They're good seats. Uh, we're gonna keep them that way by installing the Rough Country seat covers. And we'll slip the bottom on, get it in place. And then it's got straps that go underneath and reconnect. So we'll tuck this between the two. Now these straps buckle in just like a backpack would and then you just pull them tight. Front's gonna be the same way, it slides on nice and easy. Installation is a breeze. We're gonna take care of the passenger side, knock it out the same way, then we'll move on to the bag. Uh, the best thing about these is after a day on the trail, you can pull these off, hose them down, let them dry off, put them back on, and you've renewed your interior again. Uh, these really set the interior off, bang for a buck, and ease of installation can't be beat. No problem whatsoever. We're going to drop in these floor liners. These are 3D scanned for the four pan and fit perfectly. And I would call them the cherry on the top of this buildup. I love my old Jeep. It reminds me of my dad, and no matter what me and my family do in it, we always create great memories. I brought it in hoping to upgrade the shock technology and other items that as a company we've really stepped up and evolved in over the last almost nine years. But I have to say that the end result blows me away. Let's go over everything we did. First off, we replaced our old factory worn out ball joints with a pair of Rough Country upper and lower HD ball joints on both sides. From there, we took out the almost nine year old adjustable control arms and replaced those with our latest forged version, upper and lower, front and rear. We took out the original shocks that I put on eight years ago and replaced those with a monotube V2 aluminum housing shock front and rear and we also went ahead and put the V2 steering stabilizer on. There was absolutely nothing wrong with our six inch lift springs from the original kit so I made the decision to just pull those out and give them a fresh coat of paint and drop them back in. They ride great, they handle wonderful, no need to change them. It's hard to go wrong with the Mickey Thompson Baja MTZ so we kept those. I did upgrade the old rusty soft eight steel wheels to the D-Window style rough country steel wheel and I am amazed at the difference in just that. We upgraded to the Pro 9500S winch up front. The S stands for synthetic and that synthetic rope is gonna be a lot safer when we need to pull cable. We upgraded all of the lighting on the Jeep. Up front here we added the 12 inch black series with a cool white DRL, mounted that to the Hoss Fairlead bracket and I tell you this package with the thumb, the light, the winch, the refurbed bumper and the forged D-rings really sets the front of this Jeep off. We also upgraded the hood to the single row 20 inch black series cool white DRL. The same for the 50 above the windshield and the pods on the A-pillars. We're controlling all of those with the MLC6 light controller specific for the TJ, which helped us get rid of a lot of unnecessary wiring and really clean up the engine compartment. Under the hood, we've breathed new life into the engine, pun intended, with the Rough Country cold air intake. Interior wise, we added the neoprene front and rear seat covers to clean up and protect the seats that were already there. We dropped in a pair of perfectly fitting Rough Country heavy duty floor armor. And last but certainly not least, to top it off, we replaced the soft top. This Rough Country soft top did the most, in my opinion, to improve the looks of this Jeep, simply because it makes up 50% of the Jeep and it's gonna give me years of service. With a little bit of love and parts from Rough Country, we've given my Jeep a new lease on life. If you've got an old Jeep or a new Jeep, We've got the parts for you at roughcountry.com. Be sure to like this video and click subscribe to see what we do next. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.